Hey gamers, I am Centaurian Muppig and welcome to this demo version of Between the Stars. This is unreleased title. A Kickstarter is due on the 12th of September 2018. A bit about the games. This is a roguelike with action and strategy elements. Puts you in the shoes of a stellar cruiser captain. Your mission is to protect the civilized world fighting the children of the sun. The faction that dominates outer worlds of the known universe. To carry out your mission, you will have to cross the galaxy, face new challenges in each jump, make difficult decisions that will affect your ship, your crew, and the world around you, improve your ship's equipment, and fight in exciting battles to survive. The demo offers a prologue. You get to choose your male or female captain. Yeah, so this is the introduction, a bit of a tutorial on here. We're now under attack. We can see our shield strength on the left hand side. And one thing to note is that this is entire 3D space. So it's not like Rebel Galaxy where you're on a single plane. We have total 360 degrees immersion factor. Controls our keyboard and mouse. It requires a little bit of understanding the controls as we have up, down, left, right, roll. And when I mean up, down, left, right, <laughs> I mean pitch and yaw. But we also have uh, lateral and vertical thrusters, if that's the right term. These some basic enemies that don't really require too much dealing with. As we can see, we've got shield quadrants. So does our enemies. Unfortunately, the displays that we see on our targets aren't that easy to make out on a 1080 monitor. I'm wondering if is more of a 4K affair. Or even a 2k affair. We've got nuclear missiles though, which is interesting. You should just have to guide in with your mouse cursor. But there's a one hit kill when it makes a target. And then, of course, we've got our standard laser weaponry. And all these enemies are just spawning in from nowhere. But then you've also got special other special abilities like a rapid fire mode so if you can hit your target that'd be fine but engines also seem to overheat your weapons overheat with continuous use I'll just fish you off with a missile we can have a rear view there. You see I missed I'll just go in for the kill. It's a bit odd though. Looking over here, rear view, and then it looks me at the completely opposite side, so that could do with tweaking. I'll just finish off this last target. So the interesting thing here is the uh, loot mechanic. Uh, we just stop. There we go. And basically, you got to get this holographic projection to appear, and then just move your cursor and pick up the red glowing item. We have a common loot box. And yes, <laughs> they are loot boxes. <laughs> So yes, we have loot boxes and they come in different grades. 
but they offer us credits and resources. We have various amounts here, which will be used for crafting. And one of our loot boxes has actually given us a light cannon of the Republic, a Mark IV. So we, while we're here, I'll have a look. So we've got some Gatlings and light plasmas, light cannon, and our nuclear missile launcher. So we've got range, hull damage, speed, a resistance factor, no idea that. Cool down for how often we can fire it. But weapons also can cause shield damage. And so we've got various attributes. Also we've got our special abilities, for lack of a knowing term. We've got nuclear missiles and of course our burst fire. You'll have to excuse Windows notification messages. I've just had an update, so Windows has just been very noisy. And then we've got some other screens that we'll cover later where we can construct stuff. And I've got some information on our crew. Where we can acquire points and upgrade our crew's abilities. So, as we can see, our ship is badly damaged at the start of this. But let's just go over some of the ship controls, just so you're aware of how it is. This is more to playing Starpoint Gemini. It is complete 360 degree space. So we have pitch. So we can pitch up and down. We have left and right. And of course we have roll. So we have the full degree of control here, but also, if I just bring this out, we can move up and down. And of course, we can strafe left and right as well. We also have power allocations. So, we can put either full power to engines, full power to weapons, or full power to shields, which is displayed at the bottom right hand screen. And of course, also our speed control is there, so we can actually travel forwards, and there's also a reverse, just like in Star Trek 6. Undiscovered country. Back us off! Back us off! <laughs> so, it's a game is set in a universe where there are multiple star sectors to what we'll be able to explore in the full game. But at the moment, we are limited in our travels in this prologue. So, we want to travel to the tacit stellar sector. It's a bit difficult to locate where that is. As there are no highlights here, but as we can see, it's just there right in front of us. We can see our current location, our little ship orbiting, and it also tells us the current sector, our initial sector. So we want tacit sector, a unvisited, rich in synthetic mini site. So we'll click on that. So our warp drive is currently broken, however we have other means of propulsion other than using standard engines and these are, these are our quantum engines which are activated just with the space bar. The interesting touch here we've got the user interface which is all on fire, that appears when we're taking on significant damage. Captain Scott from the Fifth Republic fleet here. We request docking permission. Station control tower here. Dock at the assigned bay. Over. Receiving coordinates. Establishing communication. Docking protocol prepared. So we just need to dock at this giant space station. 
Uh, it's quite a simple affair. We just head on over to the port that has been designated to us. In this case, it's dock number two. Then we just need to slow down a bit and get with inside this little glowy area. And once it turns green, we just come to a full stop. And the game will automatically dock us to the port. <laughs> yes, of course it will. And then, of course, we've got some uh, dialogue based mechanics. So, without going too much into the dialogue of what the game is offering, uh, you get multiple options uh, to interact with various characters and people and events. So at the moment we're now docked at our space station. We need to go to our store. We need to deal with our crew and make the funeral arrangements. And then what we have, we've got this little store. The store is items that we can buy and sell from the station. We can do our repairs here. And we can also stash our loot boxes. And this is a good place so we can have common epic loot boxes, rare loot boxes, legendary loot boxes and uncommon loot boxes. So we've got five different types of loot boxes that we can collect from salvage, from destroyed vessels. You can also see uh, the systems for our ships that the West of the, that we had looked at earlier. We've actually been giving a new ship while our starter ship it gets repaired and uh, we've given been given a few new abilities such as optic camouflage an energy field that makes it harder for enemies to see us we can reduce the amount of damage into shields from what i understand that it actually recharges the shields <laughs> and we have a mine launcher Projects a minefield that explodes on contact. And we can see that we have some faction influences. We've got the SMC Intergalactic Corporation. And we have pirates and smugglers. Interestingly, they consider us allies. So we'll just accept this contract that we're being provided. And we need a ion reactor. So we're going to go and investigate the area and recover the cargo. So I've got to say there's some really nice ship models in here. And we'll both see the stellar debris around us. And various effects. And this reminds me of the Normandy from Mass Effect. Especially the engines at the rear. So a little bit of inspiration there. Not as sleek looking, of course. We're now heading on over to this Antares freighter to get this piece of ship equipment. I prepare the analysis module. Preparing the scan system. Yeah, one of the abilities is to scan on here. Quite simply, hold down the right mouse button. It's a fragment of the crater's calibration right Point your cursor at what you want to scan. The damage and radiation emissions confirm a frag cannon attack. This looks like the result of an attack. My, can you follow the radiation signature? Comparing samples. Similar readings found in nearby coordinates. Establishing route. So a nice and simple control for that. Nothing too overwhelming, especially when you got Starpoint Gemini with all those different settings that are hidden behind contextual menus. <laughs> you asked for it, crew to arms. 
But we'll just use a nuclear missile. I'll take care of this first bogey. Oh, he says. There we go. <laughs> Slightly missed on that one. Now, interestingly, it says we have a cloak. And we did have some sort of cloaking effect, but maybe a little bit too close to a target. They can see us quite clearly. We'll just use our burst weapon fires. And just watch the ship burn. Very pretty. And we'll just finish you off with another nuclear missile. As you do. And it seems they've got a point defense weapon there. That's interesting. So they can try and shoot down my missiles. But they failed to do so. And don't forget, loot. Captain, the ship's remains correspond to the fighter we've been searching for. And this is where we're talking about the dialogue, and we get some choices of what to do in this encounter. But I'm just going to go ahead to the right. When we get through a crossway. Uh, the interesting thing, you can actually end up going back to the start, but this was my second playthrough, so I've got a bit of understanding what's going on here. And then we are encountered by AI, and this is where our choices matter. And in this encounter, due to my very good dialogue choices, uh, we were able to completely without a loss of crew in this instance where if you made some bad choices we could have ended up with some crew loss how that ever affects us in the long term I do not know oh look at this little warship there we got a better angle on him and this is where our Lateral thrusters come in use for easy docking maneuvers. And we'll have a, a more successful docking attempt than our first time. So we've encountered a, or retrieved a blueprint. So we head into the department. So we're asked to create an ion reactor and first of all we've got to process this raw protonite so in our departments we can scrap that and in the scrapping workstation we just have to assign a crew member to do it and they will quickly scrap for ooh, 5,200 for tonight. So then, if we want to now build a new item, we've got a bunch of items in here, and we want the iron reactor, which will just give us engine power, and we'll just build that. Make sure we assign a crew member and complete construction. So, Susan, our mechanic, or the station mechanic, is taking our iron reactor so we can fit it to our actual ship. And we've got another favour. Oh, and we've just managed to actually <laughs> uncover an upgrade button. I had no idea. Alright, so we can actually upgrade our weapons here uh, with resources that we've acquired and to improve the stats on there that's what i've just gone and done with these pips i'm not going to bother to do the others just yet but i do believe we get to keep our weapons from the ship this can't be we have to register this immediately yeah so an interesting game mechanic in here is a photo mode
And here we go. We'll take a picture of this little Friday here. And then we have some options that we can play around with. And we can see we've got absolute clear clarity of this. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that. But we can take a picture. Get saved in our folder. Control yourself, Mr. Huggins. We won't abandon any innocence. Crew, stay alert. We'll hold off the enemy attack. Sir, yes, sir. Now, a bit of a way. So let's use our nuclear missile and guide him on in there. Quickly take care of this first target. And what I would be interested in using is these mines. Oh, it doesn't look like he <laughs> went anywhere to hear him. Well, easily dispatched. Yeah, so once we've completed a few objectives, we get our ship back. And a few equipment slots too. Plug in there. This is a good point where we can actually decide if we want to apply anything. So as you can see, we get to keep our light cannons. So we'll just replace our old ones. I'm going to upgrade our damage absorbers. It was very expensive. And we just have enough to upgrade a couple of our plasma cannons. So as you can see as we mouse over the upgrades area, you can see what sort of stats increase would be applied. In this case, our torpedo will actually get slower there, but have increased range. So it looks like there are some trade-offs here and there. And then we have a couple of optional objectives to look at. But if you want to experience them, you'll have to buy the game. So this has been between the stars, Kickstarter is due to start on the 12th of September 2018. And there's a little bit more to this in the prologue, so this isn't the end of the prologue. There's at least one more mission to complete in addition to these remaining points of interest. And yeah, this has been a sci-fi naval combat game. And definitely one to keep an eye on, even if you decide not to take part in the Kickstarter. This demo is definitely well made. If there are any bugs in this, then there must be very few. I uh, certainly haven't encountered anything that would indicate much of a problem. If you're interested in Kickstarter, I'll stick the link down in the description below. So check it out. And if you feel inclined, why do you not support these developers? They certainly present, provided a well polished demo at this point. Until the next video, gamers, and Tony Moore Pixel, thanks for watching. Bye for now.